What is going on you guys, Deonta here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my first tutorial back, which is going to be a tutorial on music video effects. So the clips that played in the beginning are going to be the effects that I'm going to be teaching you today, which include a basic speed ramp, a scene flicker, a ghost stutter, and the pans, and then a flash effect. If you want to learn how to use these effects properly and effectively, then go ahead and continue watching this video. I'm going to do my best to section them off into certain parts. I'm not sure how to do that specifically on YouTube yet, but if you see it on this video, that means I figured it out and I got it working for you guys, so enjoy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start off in Premiere. I'm going to go ahead and drag my two clips that I'm going to use for this into the timeline. So we're going to use this clip and we're going to go ahead and use, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and use this clip too. Okay, so now that we have the two clips ready, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the tutorial. The first effect I'm gonna teach you is a scene flicker effect that looks like this. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is take the clip that you're putting after the first clip and place it on top of the first clip. So then after that, you're gonna wanna hold shift and go to the end of the clip and then hold shift and then hit the arrow, the left arrow key or the right arrow key, depending on if you're scrubbing backwards or forwards. Every time that you click shift in your left arrow key, it's going to move back five frames. So when you click it twice, it's going to move back 10 frames, three times, 15 frames, so on and so on. So after you move the 10 frames, you're going to want to split the clip in half and then delete the clip that you, the whatever you have left. After that, you're going to want to go ahead and make a cut after every frame. So just move right arrow key, cut right arrow key cut right arrow key cut you're gonna go ahead and keep on doing this until you have every part up until the end of your clip once you have the end of the 10 frames you go ahead and bring this clip back down and then you go ahead and delete every other clip that you have right here one tip i do have for you guys for this effect is to make sure that the last frame that you have for this effect before it's over ends up being the first clip that you use because if not the effect will end early due to the fact that the last clip is the beginning of the next clip if you can see what i'm talking about so we're going to go ahead and run it back and see what it looks like like this All right, cool. So we have the flicker effect right there. It just flickers back and forth every frame just like that. Uh, you can change, you can add effects to it if you want to, but this is just a basic effect. If you guys want me to do that, I'll gladly do it in another video. So the next effect that we're gonna go ahead and get into is the basic speed ramps. Now this is an effect that is taught a lot on videos on YouTube, but it's actually taught in a different way. Usually the way they will teach you to do it is to left click and then show keyframes and then time remapping and then the speed and you it that way. But doing all of those keyframes takes up a lot of time for me personally and sometimes it kind of messes with the flow of my vid, not only my workflow, but my actual video, like it will change the speed and will not bring it back so it will like it'll throw off the music syncing with the clip sometimes that I try to use it so I actually just found another way that I can do it so the way I do it is I cut the clip wherever it is that I want it to start slowing down at and then I change the speed slash duration to 50% now to make sure this will work in the perfect way you do have to be recording in at least 60 frames per second in camera or I personally record in 120 frames per second to make it the smoothest that it could be, but you could be recording at 60 frames per second and anything that's higher, at least double the rate that you have in your timeline, which as you can see is 23 frames per second. So anything double that would be able to work. That's what I personally edit in and I personally shoot in 120 so it can be the smoothest. But what you want to go ahead and do is with the clip before you sped it up, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, change that to about 200. You could increase the speed however much you want, really, but I'm just going to go ahead and go with 200. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this right here so it's right after each other. After you've done that, this is what your end result is going to look like. Pretty smooth. Now what you're also going to want to do if you want to do this as a transition is I'm going to go ahead and control Z everything and I'm going to bring this right next to this clip. So if you want to use this as a transition, what you're going to want to do is uh, go about 15, 10 frames back in both clips. So I'm going to make it a cut there and I'm going to make a cut right here. Once I made that cut, I select both clips and go to nest and nested sequence and then just go ahead and increase the duration on just this nested sequence by 200. And then once I've done that, render my effect out, it should look something like this. OK, 
Okay, so as you can see, it incorporates both parts of the clip in there, but speeds it up for both ends, as you can see. That is a very quick and efficient way to do this. Some people find time revamping to be easier than what I just did, but this is uh, the most effective way that I go about doing it. And yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks the exact same. It's kind of hard to see on this clip because he's like messing with his chain, but, but that's it for that transition. Now we're on to the next one. On to the next effect now, we're going to go ahead and go with the flash effect and flash transition. So with the flash effect, what you're going to want to do is just cut where you want the flash to be, which is most likely where a hi-hat in the song would be, the little sound. You're going to want to cut your clip wherever that is. Go ahead and go into your effects and type in brightness and contrast. Drag that onto the clip that you cut, the other side of the clip that you cut. And you're going to want to go ahead and change the keyframe from 0 to 100 and then bring it back down. Uh, it doesn't really matter how far you do it. it. It all depends on where you want it to go. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to go about 15 seconds and then bring it back down to 0. So after that, it makes a, a little flash effect. But what you're going to want to do after that is actually go to your scaling and make the scaling. Uh, you can make the scale about 175. That's about what I do. And then... Uh, go about five frames actually do not go the entire 15 frames or it will look a little uh, It'll take a little bit longer. So then you're gonna want to go ahead and change the, uh, the Scale back to 100 and then see what your effect looks like after that. It should look something like this So a little a little flash effect a little pan along with it So then another way to do this is actually through the transition that you can use which would involve you bringing the clips over here and then another fast way to do this is to skip about five frames this way and or I'm actually going to do 10 frames and then 10 frames this way and then create another nested sequence right here. Then put the brightness and contrast on this clip. This way you're going to use the keyframes a little bit differently. You're going to want to go ahead and start at zero with this keyframe. Go to 10 keyframes ahead where the next clip would start at then put 100 and then go ahead and change that back down to zero at the end of the nested sequence and it should look something like this. So you see a little flash effect. These are typically used at the hi-hats where the, where the uh, beat goes ahead and makes the noise if you know what I'm talking about and yeah. All right, so up next we have the ghost stutter and the pans that I'm teaching you along with the ghost stutter. So to do this effect, what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and go to your desired clip uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it about right here probably. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over here and then go ahead and skip five frames up. Go ahead and cut it right there. And then you're, what you're gonna wanna do is Control C and then you're gonna wanna duplicate it two more times, right? And then bring these right down. So now you have the same stuttering clip right here and then it starts again. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do after that is go ahead and with the three, that you just made, go ahead and make a nested sequence. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and copy the nested sequence and paste it above itself. So after you pasted it above yourself, you're gonna wanna go to the top clip and change the opacity to 50. After you change the opacity to 50, you're gonna wanna make a keyframe with the scaling. After you do that, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make the scale 175 and then go to the end of the clip and bring it down to 100. After you've done that, it's going to go ahead and look something like this. All right, so we have the actual like ghost effect done now. So now what you're going to want to do is after the next clip starts where the uh, where the ghost effect ends at, you're going to want to go ahead and create another pan, a fast pan. You can start at 175, go about five frames above and then go back to 100 and it should look something like this. This effect is typically used when you're going ahead and you're gonna uh, edit a part of the song where it's like a little echo effect or something like that. Anything that you want a little echo in. You can actually tweak this effect by also bringing on the brightness and contrast to the clip that you have 50% opacity on. And then you just go ahead and copy and paste the 100 and zero keyframes frame to frame back to back. After you do that, After you do that completely, it should look something like that and have a fast flicker effect just like that. It could cause a little, a little pain to the eyes, but it's a cool effect, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the list. So now we're gonna go on and move on to the last effect. 
Okay, I actually had a final effect to show you guys, but um, my computer keeps crashing. Alright, so once you're done with that, your mask should now be... Wow, no way Premiere just crashed like that. So instead of the fifth effect, I'm actually going to give you just a free effect that I'm going to give you available to download on my cell phone store. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed that instead of uh, the actual missing effect because my premiere is fast as fuck now and I'm not doing this again. If you guys enjoyed the video, I want you guys to give it a like, thumbs up, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I apologize that I couldn't teach you this last one, but I hope that giving you this free effect for you to download fixes that. With that being said, that's going to be the end of the video today. If you guys enjoyed, I want you to go ahead and leave a like rating, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Turn on the notification bell for the next time I upload a video just like this. More informative videos for directors just like me. And yeah, make sure you guys do all that good stuff. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Stay creative. Peace.